Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. And on today's show, I have Alita Love. Let me take you a little, let me tell you a little bit about Alita. Alita specializes in creating the best deal possible for her clients as an agent at the Babylon location, one of, her, one of Long Island's most elite brokerage. Engaging and earnest in her approach and strategic in her thinking, she draws upon many years in marketing and business to thoughtfully consider the needs of her buyers, sellers, renters, and flawlessly find and market their residences. Alita, thank you so much for being up here to appear. How are you? I am fantastic. How are you today? I am good. So Alita, tell us how did you start in the business and what you did before you got into real estate? Oh, wow. What a long, long story. <laughs> I had time to tell you. Um, but my major, uh, I went to college and my major is business um, administration. And I got into real estate actually from my high school teacher and um, economics. Uh, he really wanted me to be, he, I did really well in the class and he was thinking um, real estate would be for me. And at the time I was young and I was like, no. <laughs> and um, he actually offered to pay for half of my real estate courses. Um, That's nice of him. It was amazing. But at the time I was really young and I really wasn't into it. Uh, so I passed it from the offer. And um, a few years later, um, flashing forward, I just went on my own after like a um, college break during the summer, did a crash course and did the whole, the whole semester for our real estate courses and completed it in a summer during college. And I've been doing it ever since, six years. Six years, okay. Now, you know, being in this market, being in the New York City area, especially in Long Island, how are you seeing prices, uh, you know, are they going up, are they going down? This they're staying steady. How do you see the market, uh, especially with home prices? <sighs> well, the, mar the market is changing right now. And I have to say, it's a buyer's market. And the shift is changing from a seller's market. It was once seller's market. And most recently, I want to say June, um, there has been a shift. And I can see it going down the path of becoming more of a buyer's market due to inventory. So inventory yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say. I wanted to talk about inventory. Do you think it's still um, is there still available properties, or is is just that um, there's just not enough properties to go around for buyers? Oh my God, it, it, it's a heightened in um, inventory. Hence, why there's so many buyers that have more opportunities to look around and to pick from. Um, so I see them being able to say, you know what? No, I don't want this one. I want this one. I don't want this one. I want this one, and. You know, they have choice. They have options. They don't have to settle once um, from before when they had like a shorter inventory with higher prices. And, you know, now that I see sellers having to lower their price a little bit uh, right now in the Long Island market. So, you know, and it's funny because, you know, uh, you hear the news that some people still say that it's still a seller's market, but I guess it depends on the, on the area. So in Long Island, now you've seen the shift from sellers to buyers. Yes. Wow. That's so how do you adjust as an agent, you know, working on both sides of the fence? It's all a numbers game, really. It's all about how you negotiate and what works for the both of you guys. Uh, because also in addition to the shift, uh, interest rate has gone up a little bit uh, since June. Um, we're at about 4.7%. Uh, and that's a major difference. That's not going to lie a buyer, um, a lot of buyers right now uh, in addition. So the buyers that are out, they're serious and they're ready to look, they're ready to buy before the interest rate goes up even more. So we got some serious buyers out there. So do you see uh, now with, with it being a buyer's market, are you seeing more uh, buyers with, you know, offering cash or is it more still the conventional route that some of these buyers are uh, going after these houses? My experience is a lot of mortgage, a lot of conventional loans, um, FHA. I'd say millennials are out and about right now. Um, they're at that age right now where they're looking to buy. Uh, we're talking about 27 plus. They have families now. They're out and about. They have great credit and they have their settled careers. Uh, so you see them, a lot of millennials and uh, baby boomers out and about um, looking for, hos for housing and such. So... It you know, like I said, it's just weird how, you know, from one day to the next, a market can switch so quickly. Yeah. Um, so for you, as an agent, do you prefer, I mean, is it apartments, rentals, uh, 
sales does how does that fit into your uh, criteria and do, does it matter to you it doesn't matter to me. It really matters about how serious you are to buy, how serious you are to sell. Um, where do you want to go? Where do you want to be? Do you have a goal? Um, and if you do have a goal, how can I help you complete that goal? Uh, whether you're looking to get into a condo and you have, you know, the finances and you have the, um, you know, the ambitions and actually have the tools and materials to get where you have to go. Um, because as long as your ducks are aligned, uh, and you know, you are approved, you're qualified, you have the same as you have that 20% down, then you're ready to go. And that's all I care about. Um, so, you know, that's, and that's a good point. Now, you being an agent and dealing with all types of buyers coming into the market, um, how important is credit now? It seems like that's the first question that all landlords ask, how is your credit? Then your salary, Maybe. it seems. What, how do you Maybe. see that? It is major. It is to a point where it's like access denied if your credit score is not above a 700 plus. Um, credit is, it's, it's major key. If your credit is not good, it doesn't matter how much money you have to put down. It doesn't matter how much you can, you know, finance, you know, to get, you need credit for everything, credit for everything, you know, to get the best deal, honestly, also. You don't want a high interest rate. You don't want a high you know, mortgage rate, you want a good mortgage rate so you're comfortable in your home purchase. So you definitely want to make sure your credit is fantastic before you go on that journey. So for, for someone that's looking to either rent an apartment or let's say buy a house, yeah. paperwork wise, is it about the same in terms of what the landlord is asking for or, or maybe the owner of a home or how does the paperwork differ between a renter and a buyer? Ooh, what a difference. Um, yeah. Even with rentals, okay. let, me, yeah, let me mention how important it is to have your credit um, in a great state as in a rental also, mm -hmm. because in rentals, um, it's very important to uh, have great credit because they have a pick of the litter. There's so many people who are renting right now, um, and they're going to pick the one with the highest credit score, even if you have a good amount of money put down, even if you do an additional month security. I've seen it for myself. They will pick the person with the 800 credit score versus a 650 or a 600. It's just the name of the game. It's just the way I've seen it uh, in, in the market thus far in Long Island. They want 800 credit score. Um, as far as paperwork is concerned, really very much they go in depth uh, when it comes to getting a loan of debt to income ratio. Okay. Uh, we got to make sure that you can afford your mortgage. Um, yes, the numbers make sense that mortgages are reasonably a decent amount once you put a certain amount down and you have a great um, interest rate, uh, but you also have to have the funds. Uh, they want to see that you can afford it. Uh, they want to make sure that you, all your, all your, um, amount of income that's coming in, it's not going directly to your mortgage and that's it and that you can, you know, just get by. They want to make sure that you're stable. Um, so it's very important that you've earned a job for over two plus years uh, and also have um, that income generated in a constant basis and you have proof of income. Uh, and if you have like gifts from family, that's also a plus. If you have a great down payment, I'd say 20% plus. Uh, that's also great. Uh, and credit is very, very, very important. Yeah, no. And, and uh, to me, I, I, I belong to this real estate club a few years ago. And the president of the club said that credit is the new form of discrimination. And it yeah. doesn't matter who it is. If they see you, whether you're black or white, if that credit score is low, nine out of 10 times, you're going to either have to pay a higher interest rate like you just mentioned, or what, maybe you have to put more money down or just in terms, just go away for someone else with a better credit. Um, uh, so how do you see now are rents being stabilized still or, or slowly but surely rents are going up compared to, you know, now with housing being available for buyers? How, how does that, you know, uh, you know, do they meet in the middle somewhere? In other words, are the rents just skyrocketing like you hear, like, you, like here in Manhattan? Uh, rent is going up a bit um, compared to a couple of years ago. Uh, rent is not the same that it was a couple of years ago. Now they're asking for more because they can't. Um, you can get a, a studio for 
expensive pricing. And it's because they can do that. And it's because there's a scarcity for apartments here uh, in Long Island. So they get to choose what price they want as owners. Um, rental commodities in Long Island is major. Um, if you decide to become a person who wants to be a landlord, uh, it's very lucrative because you have the upper hand. So yes. Yeah, pricing. yeah, you know, because I, I look at Manhattan and my God, Alita, the prices are just outrageous, you know, for an old tenement building. Yeah, a, a, a studio, I mean, a, a one bedroom starts at 1800 and this is for a tenement, nine out of 10 cents, it could be a walk up. Then you go to a high rise where a studio starts off, what, at 2500, 3500, depending on how, you know, the luxurious the building is. Yeah. So for you, like, how do you keep up with such market trends? Like how, what, what news source do you use? If you don't have to reveal it, all of it, but how do you keep up with, with such uh, uh, market shifting? Huh, well, I just listen to the community. I'm really in depth within the community. I am part of the uh, Deer Park Chamber of Commerce, uh, which is a chamber of commerce in Long Island. Um, I really love to hear what other people say about the market. Just in the supermarket, I can ask, you know, small talk. What do you think? And where are you at? And how's, you know, how's it like in your neighborhood? And I really get the answer from the people, the common people in the community. They really give me uh, in depth because they, you know, some people are happy about it. Some people are not happy about the shift, uh, depending on where you're at. Um, and I definitely advise people who are looking to buy right now to buy right now before the interest rate goes up. Um, and, you know, then you'll be knocked out of that, that bracket. Because people, some people are teetering right now to be able to, you know, qualify. Do you see any market changes? I know now you you said you see the shift uh, going into buyers. Yeah. Um, do you see any type of market correction where some home prices might come down, or you think it's going to still stay where we at for another couple of years? Well, that's the also thing why it becomes a buyer's market is because the shift. As a seller, you have to lower your price to be a part of the competition. Um, buyers do have options. So you wanna leverage yourself to be able to stand out. And that leverage is to lower your housing. It's starting to become where housing prices are gonna drop a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past few years, there have been housings that they can ask for amount, a good amount and be able to get it because they can, because it was such a short amount of inventory compared to today where inventory is, is more. So now you have to be in, comp you know, in the competition. So yeah, you're gonna have to lower your prices a bit compared to before. Okay. And you know, because I see like here in Manhattan, you know, such, uh, there's so much more construction going on. It seems like every other block has construction. How is the Long Island market in terms of uh, a construction? Anything happening there or it's just pretty much where it was like a, six months ago, a year ago? Where do you see that market going or well, happening, I should say? Well, the market, as far as the construction versus regular um, housing, um, is, is starting to stagger a bit due to the tariffs um, that has been placed on trade. Uh, so it's more diff it's it's difficult for a um, investor to try to do new construction versus buying a house that's like a foreclosure or something and doing a flip because the materials are a lot more these days, uh, causing a less profit margin for them. So it doesn't make sense to them uh, in a business aspect for them to do brand new constructions. Uh, so I hear it is staggering uh, more so of new constructions than it was a couple of years ago due okay. to building material increases, it's very effective. You know, these taxes are very effective on um, housing, um, new construction inventory. And it's funny because you don't hear about that. That's, that's a great point. Thanks for bringing that out because you know what? Uh, it's like when Trump said that he's gonna, uh, you know, tax, what was it, the steel? And, yeah. I, and I forgot what was the other part. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, so all of a sudden, yeah, and he's gonna charge all these tariffs and, you know, listen, I, I understand him trying to make America, you know, have income coming in instead of going out to foreigners or whatever. But at the same time, I guess he's not seeing how it can affect the construction industry, especially since he was a developer himself. Exactly. Yeah. So do you see any more fix and flips in the area then um, because of, you know, 
lack of construction? Do you see more investors getting into a fix and flip? Yes, definitely. That is a boom out here in Long Island. A lot of investors are buying from the bank and, you know, investing in that property because it's already built. It just needs some tender loving care. And once you give it that and you match it to the uh, market, you can get top dollar um, or a good amount due um, in the market area. You definitely got to do your research before you do a flip, of course. Uh, but, you know, if a house is bought by the bank, you can get it for a lot less. Uh, giving you an opportunity to make a lot more and you already have the foundation, the structure, uh, you just make it the way you want it. That's pretty much what I'd say is um, foreclosures is the name of the game right now. Gotcha. So for you, Alito, what's like, how are, do you see yourself progressing in the real estate field, especially as an agent with new buyers and sellers coming in every day? Um, do you, when you talk to these, uh, let's say potential buyers, um, what kind of advice do you give them? I mean, just like you told us a little earlier, just make sure your credit is maintained, make sure you have the deposit. Is that how you pretty much um, uh, talk to your, to, your, uh, to your buyers? You know, give them that type of advice? Yes, that's exactly how I talk to my buyers because they need to be informed and educated uh, before making such a major purchase and decision. Uh, especially if you're a first-time home buyer, we got to talk about the mortgage programs. We need to talk about uh, where you're at financially. And um, if you are um, married or if you're buying on your own, uh, so forth, um, whatever your situation is, we got to pick apart, you know, what you can afford, uh, set you up with, you know, the tools that you need, uh, which is um, definitely getting pre-qualified and seeing your debt to income ratio. Uh, and then we'll go from there because the worst thing that you can do is look for houses that you can't afford. Um, and waste your time and get your hopes up. We want to be realistic. We want to be, you know, have our facts together before we go out there in the field and um, get started. Okay, no, th that's good. So here in the city, uh, if you want to uh, rent an apartment, it's usually 40 times the rent. Is that the same in Long Island or is, is that a, like a standard in New York City? That is a standard in New York City. Uh, in, in New York period, 40 times the rent mm -hmm. um, is definite um, in Long Island as well. That's what they look for when they try to, um, you know, narrow down uh, who they choose to, you know, as the best candidate. So that's why I say it's very important to have your credit um, up to par and make sure that you have, you know, a good amount um, put away and saved before you make that venture on renting, um, you know, a, a dream apartment of yours that you want right so um now the question always that people ask uh, that i hear is when you're looking to buy a house the standard is 20 percent down yeah can you put 10 percent down five percent down or that depends on the lender uh, how do you you know in your in your uh, experience what do you think i i say definitely put 20 percent down you don't want to uh, um, you know, do anything less than that, I'd say, because the PMI will be affected by that. 20% um, down is very, is the best move I'd say to make. Mm -hmm. um, because if your PMI of under 20%, your PMI will be affected. I actually know someone who put less than 20% down and now they have to pay an additional $200 a month uh, in their mortgage because of it. Uh, so you really got to be mindful of your contract. You got to be mindful of how much you put down. And even though you want to pocket it, you know, it's best to put as much as you can down. And I think that 20% um, will definitely help you uh, with um, your mortgage, your actual cost of mortgage. It will help you in the long run. So 20% down is where it's at. So for, so for some of my owners that might not know what PMI is, why, how does that come to play? And can you explain what PMI is? And why would a, a lender uh, uh, charge PMI? Uh, PMI is basically like security, um, you know, to make sure that you can secure the loan. Um, when you, the less you put down, the more they feel that you're not as qualified. Uh, the more you put up, they will feel as you're less of a risk. Um, so that 20% down really secures that you have the money and you're not as much of a risk factor uh, helping you actually in the long run. Also compared with your credit score, um, to get you the best rate for the best price and not add on those extra uh, fees um, that they would add on if you were not at risk and so forth. 
Okay, no, thanks. Uh, that's good because, you know, you, you, always, you know, you read articles, oh, you could put 10% down, but they don't, rarely do they mention the PMI, how can it affect you? Especially, like you said, you know, you might have a buyer that puts 10%, but now they're paying an extra $200 that they might not have. Or they yeah. can use that money for food or for, or for utilities or whatever. So Alita, over the next couple of years, how do you see your business growing? Like personally, like what, what are you looking for to grow your business? Uh, the way I, I want to grow my business, help others buy and sell real estate, but also to educate. Uh, I feel that the more you educate whoever you're around, they'll help you um, along. They, they want to work with you along the way in addition um, to help them because they know that you mean well for them. And I mean, well, for all my buyers and sellers. So I want to educate you and I want to uh, make your experience the easiest experience, the most smoothest experience by basically just being, um, you know, helped the best way possible with the most information possible. Um, keeping informed, staying in touch, um, really morally and ethically correct. Um, just be keeping it real with them. Right. Um, you know, that's very important. Also, never hiding any you know, information that they need to know. Um, very important, just just to not even sweeten anything. Um, even if something is not right or doesn't seem right, you just gotta let them know anyway. And I think that's my business. That's what I run by, that's how I live by. And it's really been lucrative for me um, because trust is important, especially in a home purchase. Oh, sounds good. So for you, Alita, like what is it that you do daily to ensure your success? What, what is that one, like what makes you get up? <sighs> what makes me <laughs> Sun. No, um, <laughs> uh, everything makes me get up, um, you know, just to, to be alive and to actually live my dream is very important to me. Um, you know, I've always had that, um, that drive ever since I was in high school, um, you know, even though I was hesitant about it always had in the back of my mind that I've always wanted to do real estate. And I think that, you know, people need help and people need someone on in their corner that's going to look in their best interest. Um, that alone, me knowing, given that, so who I work with, that's enough yeah. for me in the morning to go help somebody else and then help somebody else and then help somebody else. If I can help the next person um, and send them in the right direction, um, in the right fashion, um, and keep them in, in the best way possibly informed, I'm doing my job every single day. Yeah, and you know what, that comes back to you. The more you help people, the more it comes back to you. Yes. So, okay, so as we're about to end the show, Alita, what, for you, like what's your favorite book or what book you, you like to read? Any book you can re recommend to the audience any, or audio book? You know, or video? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, one of my first books I've read that I really, 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 really loved is The Alchemist by um, Paul Coloa. Col um, Great book. It is. I think it's, I think it's Pablo, Pablo Coelho, something like that. Pablo Coelho, yeah. Yeah, it's a great book, yeah. It is one of my all-time favorites because really the treasure um, that you're trying to find is really within. So whatever you want to do, even if it's not real estate, if it's something else, uh, it starts with you. It starts with your inner being, your inner self. Uh, once you discover the treasures within you, you can go so far in life. You can do so much in life. Um, another book that I love is Think Big, Grow Big. Okay. Um, another book that I really love is Think Rich, Grow Rich. Um, okay. And um, How to Influence. Um, is that the one um, by Dale Carnegie, How to Win yes. Friends and Influence People? People, yes. Yes, that's a good book too, yeah. So, you know, I am a reader. Barnes & Noble is something I love to do at least once a week. Okay. Uh, so I'm always reading, but those books you really need to, in this type of field, you have to keep motivated. You got to keep um, up to date on the market and you really got to keep up to date with your mind and make sure that you're staying positive all the time. No, sounds good. And if somebody wants to reach you, where would they go? If you want to reach me, you can just Google me, uh, Alita Love, that's A-L-E-T-A, -E last name is Love, L-O-V-E, and then my whole slew of Facebook, which is also Alita Love, um, Instagram, Alita Love Official, um, and Love Real Estate L-I, um, those okay. are my Instagram pages, but for definitely for real estate, please visit 
love real estate nyli uh, for the latest for all my listings and what's going on in the market and everything else um as far as linkedin alita love and just google me you'll know everything <laughs> good. sounds good alita thank you so much for being on peter peer real estate show uh thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and we'll definitely keep in touch definitely thank you so much for having me you have a great day you too bye-bye bye, -bye. bye. Well, everyone, that was Alita Love. Thank you, Alita, for being on Peter Peer Real Estate Show. You can find Alita at alita.love at element.com. That's Alita, A-L-E-T-A dot love at element.com. You can also reach her at 631-422-7510, extension 271. Again, Alita, thank you so much for being on the show. Oh, before I go, please go to peerpeerrealestate.com. That's peer the number two peerrealestate.com. Check out our past shows. Check out our blog. Check out our free resource page. When you get a chance, also if you can, go to iTunes and look for us at Peter Peer Real Estate Podcast. Please subscribe, leave a review, tell us how we can improve the show. And before I go, just remember what I always say after every after I end every show: Please do not give up. It's your life. It's your dream. Keep on keeping on. Don't let anyone talk you out of your goals or your career choice. It's your life. You have to live it the way you want to live it, okay? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening to Peter Peer Real Estate. I'm your host, Willie Morales. Until next time, thanks, everyone. Have a great, great day. Bye.